So, it's come to my attention that out in the world exists a version of my favorite Pokemon game, Pokemon Y, which has been altered to be more competitive and more interesting to play through. Not only does it have all 721 Pokemon available, it changes most trainer battles to be way more difficult. And don't get me started on the leaders who can even have legendary Pokemon. Oh my god! They all have competitive IVs, natures, and items. Oh, and they've also added more double, triple, and rotation battles. Now, I have no clue how hard this version of the game actually is, but the file was labeled insanity.exe, so I guess we'll see. I'm just gonna do a normal playthrough of the game while finding the most popular Pokemon around, which is yet again based on the previous list of favorite Pokemon, which will be in the description. So last week I played the worst shiny only run I've ever had to endure and this time I'm going to get to play the best one with the difficulty ramped up to 11 with the most dopest shinies possible using the most beloved Pokemon in the franchise. Will I be good enough to beat this insane version of Y or will I stumble and fall? I guess you'll have to wait and see. So I begin my adventure by picking the best water starter hands down and one of the coolest shiny Pokemon. Now what's epic about this run, for me at least, is the shiny rate has actually been increased, which means I don't have to sit here dripping in gamer ass sweat. Let's go. Thank god it only took one episode of One Piece, and after that we had a shiny Froakie on the team. Now this naming theme is potentially one of the hardest ones I'll ever do, so if you get it, uh, congratulations. This little girl we name at Korra, and what's even cooler than the increased shiny rate is the Pokemon we get to catch on Route 1. Now, if you're in the know like me, you can actually get some early Cherish Balls in this shop, take them to the first patch of grass, and if you do that, you get the opportunity to catch one of these beautiful Pokemon. According to the poll, its evolution is the fifth most popular Pokemon in existence. Shiny Torchic, baby. Ooh, let's go. And with it safely in a ball, we name it Cade 6 and before the catcher tour, we've already caught a Pokemon. Now, in this version of Pokemon Y, every route has a wide range of different Pokemon. Not only does it have the typical Kalos Pokemon, but it also adds in a lot of other terrible Route 1 encounters. Things like Zigzagoon or Patrat. Now, obviously, we don't care about this Route 1 Pokemon because none of them are the world's favorite, so we can move on through the forest and to the first gym. Now, along the way, I did notice that the fights were ramping up and getting more and more difficult. Let me just say, this gym turned it up even hotter. Now, although it's not a hardcore Nuzlocke, let alone a Nuzlocke at all, I'm still trying to stick to level caps as much as possible, but I am doing this whole thing blind, so sometimes I may over-level and sometimes I may be a little under-level. So I'm gonna do my best. You can't even tell that he's shiny. In preparation for the gym, however, I evolved my two starters, and now without a further ado, let's get into the gym battle. Viola. That's what she always has. Holy shit! So not only are her Pokemon way higher level than they normally are, she also has six of them, all with items and a proper nature. Ugh. First up, we lead with Combuskin, and in comes Surskit. Now, she normally has a Surskit, but the rest of her team is far from usual. Fortunately, after a couple of pecks and after she heals back up, we do take it down. In comes Larvesta now, so we swap to Frogadier, who takes it down. Little Joltik is next, and we swap back to Combuskin and take it out with a Fire Punch, which I was able to pick up just before the fight at the mark. Oh yeah, did I mention they made TMs far more accessible in this version by spreading them across all of the Pokemon centers? Epic. Anyway, back to the battle. Vivalon is next to fall to the same Fire Punch, Duel comes in next and hangs on from a Water Pulse and set up to Stealth Rock before we take it down. Now she's down to her final Pokemon, Dust Dogs. I heal up Combuskin now before we are Toxic Venoshock comboed, and down goes Frogadier. But it's alright because now Combuskin is fully healed and we can come in and finish the job with a Fire Punch. Okay, Gym 1 wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be, and it gave me a false sense of confidence. I had no idea what I was about to come up against at the next gym, but first we have this opportunity to get two more shiny Pokemon on the team. First of which is the 8th most popular Pokemon. Let's go! Let's go! Shiny Route! And it's a female as well, that's much preferred. We named this cutie Marasop, and its evolution definitely matches the name, god damn. Anyone into a little bit of smash or pass knows what I'm talking about. The next shiny on the block is shiny number one. The most popular Pokemon, and if you want to be the number one most popular person in my heart, hit subscribe, because uh, that would make me like super duper happy, and you'd be joining one of the best communities on YouTube, so uh, why the hell not do it? But the number one Pokemon, to absolutely nobody's surprise, is... Drumroll! 
fish! Yeah! Okay, obviously it's not. It's Charmander, but we do have to beat our first triple battle. Now, this was kind of an annoying fight, but it just involved a lot of slow chipping down, so we beat Sickadaddy and begin soft resetting. P.S. I did the same thing I did in the purple only run to find the shiny easier, and if you want to know how to do that, go watch that video after this one. It's really, really good. It's so what? Shiny Charmander, let's go! Mega Charizard Y is a special attacker as well, right? Yes! Oh, yes, perfect. I name it Zer, and with the team filling up, I make my way towards Gym 2. But before we get there, we have to do a couple of things. First up is a rival fight. Let's see how it goes. Oh, Tiano battle. Cool fish, okay. I was like, hang on, we about to get into a triple rotation fuckfest battle? Even though we weren't getting into a triple rotation fuckfest battle, whatever the fuck that is, we were about to get our asses kicked. As all of my Pokemon go um, down to a Sword Stance core damn. fish. Damn. Alright. Uh, let's try that again. Yeah, screw you, you stupid crab thing. Moving on, we help out the people on the manor, beat down the Snorlax, barely, and head on to, oh, what's that? Another rival battle? Oh, God. Okay, time to prove I don't suck at this game. Epic. Anyway. Moving on, you can actually lose this fight and continue on like nothing ever happened. So that's what I'm gonna do. Next up on the list of things to do before we beat Gym 2, hey, that rhyme, is to take down the Team Flare goons. These goons have far more annoying teams than what they do in the base game. They have Pokemon like Gulpin, which is always poisoning you. You got Electrike paralyzing you and Houndour burning you. Oh my god, the. Honestly, so far, I haven't shown all of it. The amount of freaking status afflictions I've been hit with is unreal. But after many trips back to the Pokemon Center to remove those status conditions, we make it to the Scientist and the Double Battle. Let's see if this Double Battle goes any better. Well, that wasn't horrible. At least we beat it. Finally, now we can head down to Gym 2, and already our squad is so close to reaching Final Stage. In fact, our Curlia even evolves into the most smashable Pokemon around. I don't care, I'll say it! Alright, let's do some rock climbing and head up to Grant, who now has a full team of six. The last gym fight wasn't that bad, I'm sure this will be fine. So, to my surprise, this is actually a double battle, and things instantly start going poorly. First turn, he starts role-playing as Tate and Liza, and sets up a light screen, and we fail to finish off the Soul Rock with a Water Pulse. This then leads to Combustion being knocked out by a Psychic Attack. Not a great start, but what could make it worse? The next turn I try and finish the Soul Rock, but oh, he subs in Cradilly, which has the ability Water Absorb. So we deal no damage and raise its special attack instead. Lunatone then takes down Charmeleon with an Earth Power, so I send out Gardevoir. But that was pointless as well, as all the damage we deal to Cradilly is restored from a Giga Drain as he takes out Frogadier. And as if to rub it in, he recovers to full HP and we are slowly wilted down to dead. Yikes, this leader is gonna be hard. Let's try that again. Hang on. Flinch John. If we didn't flinch there, we won. No. Yo, that was so close. Alright! Third time's the job! This time I lead with Frogadier and Gardevoir. My plan here is to set up a bunch of Carmines and then try to roll. Of course the Sun and Moon set up the screens as Frogadier does whatever damage it can before it gets taken out. Fortunately, he lives long enough to take down the Soul Rock, and in comes Aerodactyl, who wastes his Power Herb Sky Attack on the Frogadier, who was already super weak. Now, after three mines, I think Gardevoir is ready to sweep. Unfortunately, the screens are still up, so our damage is reduced, but Psychic does enough to Aerodactyl to take it to half, and then Charmeleon can finish it with a cheap Dragon Rage. Now, I know Dragon Rage is cheap, but I will use anything I can to get through this. We then take out Lunatone and in comes Pseudowoodo and Cradilly. That demon Cradilly! Fortunately, Charmeleon dodges Pseudowoodo's Rock Slide and Gardevoir can tank it quite easily. We heal Gardevoir back up as Cradilly poisons Gardevoir. Okay. But thanks to Synchronize, he actually poisons himself as well. Synchronize! Hey! Get done on, bruh! Screw you, Cradilly! See ya, you're trying. But now... Now you've fucked yourself. Unfortunately, one more rock slide does spell the end of Charmeleon, but we do get Pseudowoodo down. Finally, all that's left is Cradilly and Relicanth. The screens finally wear off after lasting for so goddamn long thanks to those two rocks having light clay on them. But with them gone, we can one-shot Psychic Relicanth, and even though that dumb Cradilly fully heals, 
All it takes is one more psychic to put it down. Oh my god, thank god that's over. But this was only gym two. I could only imagine what lies ahead of me. And if I was to tell you, I don't think you'd believe me. Carrying on ahead, we head to the next route to find our next shiny. Yup, Ia Papa. Aya Papa. Not only is Eevee on this list at spot number 9, its evolution is also on the list at spot number 6. Set you free, Eevee, yeah, be. Oh my god, it's Johnny Eevee. Why am I being cringe? I don't know. But I guess you'll have to wait and see what it evolves into. We name this future badass Saint 14 and push through the next route and onto the Reflection Cave. On the way there, as a reward for beating the second gym, we unlock the ability pills to pop to switch the abilities on our Pokemon. The only Pokemon I end up changing, however, is Frogadier, who now has Protein. And man, I had no idea how good this hidden ability was. For those of you who don't know what Protein does, it changes the type of the Pokemon to match the same type as the move that they last use. This means Frogadier can change to any type at once to avoid taking super effective damage. Now on the second level of this cave, we find the final shiny Pokemon of the run in spot number two. It's Gengar. Oh, Shiny Ghostly! Let's go! Yes! But I'm really surprised Gengar is really the number two most liked Pokemon. Like, Gengar is cool, but it being number two really does surprise me. But now that I'm thinking about it, it is given a lot of love. It has both a Mega and a Gigantamax, as well as being featured quite heavily in the anime, so makes sense. We name it Aldrin Solve and head towards Gym 3, and claiming our Mega Band. Getting this Mega Bracelet is a priority for sure, because a bunch of this team actually has Mega capabilities. And so, in order to do that, we have to beat Ikora twice and take down our rival. Now in preparation for all that, I get the OG squad members to their final stage. Black Greninja! Oh, that's so cool. Black Charizard! Oh my god, amazing! And a slightly more red chicken? Uh, well, at least he's strong. Alright, first up, Callum Battle. First up, he leads with the usual Meowth stick. Of course, it's got to set up a Reflect with Light Clay. Great, love that. But a few Water Pulses later, and it's taken down. Chestnut is next, and it manages to take out my Blaze again before Charizard comes in to finish it off. Dragonair is taken out by Gardevoir with some fairy type moves before we take down the original Australian Pokemon with Charizard. And finally, his Vaporeon is cheesed by Confuse Ray from Haunter. Done and dusted, Kalem. You're gonna need to improve if you want to beat me. Alright, Gym 3. Kinda insane to think for a change, I'm at Gym 3 with a team of almost level 40 Pokemon, when normally level 40 is like Gym 7 or 8. But anyway, what's this skater grill got for me to face? Alright, an oversized mushy against a giant black lizard. Let's see what happens. Yes, goodbye, Breloom. Focus band. Focus Ash, sorry. Nice! Lovely! You f what? Now, this is the type of fight I have come to expect in this run. Next turn, of course, she fully heals the thing before Haunter takes it down with two Shadow Balls. Gallade will suffer the same fate as Haunter's Shadow Ball is quite effective against it. Pangora inspires me to switch out to the Fire Chicken, who sets up with a bulk up, raising our attack and defense, while our ability raises our speed. A double kick just doesn't take it out, and he's healed back up to full. We lower it back down again as we raise our stats again before finishing it off. The Pangora missed all of its gunk shots on me, so that was kind of helpful. Paulucha is potentially scary, but since we've bulked up so much, not in real life of course, only in the game I'm still fat IRL, we managed to take it out. Terrakion? What? Motherfuck, what? <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna try, well, double kick it should do bits, cause we're double, double bulked up. Oh. Terrakion, more like, to take this L, Leon. Oh! Hell <laughs> yeah, okay. I was like kind of scared there for a second, but nothing to be scared of. Lucario? Lucario Shmario. Hey look, it's Mario. Oh, she's Meg. She's using a Mega. In okay, fair enough. Vacu- 
It outspeeds me? And it takes out my Haunter with a Flash Cannon. And God of War is weak to that, so I send in Greninja. Now we have revives for a reason, and that reason is to bring back the Charizard who didn't even get to show what he was capable of. Man, using that revive felt weird though, I haven't used one of those in a very long time. Anyway, Charizard does finish off Lucario with a Flame Burst. The next gym should be pretty easy as well. But now that I know they have legendaries, like she has a freaking Terrakion. I'm sure I mentioned it in the script already, but to me, I, I didn't even know they had legendaries. Now that we've finally unlocked our Mega Bracelet, we slap some stones on Charizard and Blaziken and head across the water, up the hill, on the train to the gym, and we are of course stopped by Kalem. This fight is basically the same as the previous fight with him, except Ooh. this time it's way easier, thanks to the power of Mega Blaziken. Ooh, I don't know what happened to him. I don't know if I like that. What's happened to him? He's been fried. I don't know if I like that. Normally when a Pokemon Mega Evolves, they, the shiny looks even cooler, but like God of Wars or Gengars, for example, which we'll see later, but this guy looks like he was just dipped in some oil and prepared to be fried into some KFC. I, I Literally, I have no idea. This, this shiny sucks. Anyway, we beat him and head up to the most responsible elder alive. Who the fuck throws scissors like that? What the heck? All jokes aside, this is actually a rotation battle, which is really cool. I wasn't expecting this, but the three Pokemon I sent out actually work out quite well. Straight away, he Mega Evolves his Venusaur as we Mega Evolve our Charizard. Look at that shiny boy! Oh my god, I love Mega Charizard. Why? Oh, it's shiny. is so cool. Big drought. Come on in. Now with the drought set up, I was ready to hit the Venusaur with a Flame Burst, but... Explain to me how that fat plant outspeeds me! Someone. Ha ha ha. We dodge. Now you die to a flame burst. You can't set up spikes now, Ferrothorn. You get one shot. Shouldn't all the other Pokemon around it also get hit for this fl from flame burst? Torterra. That's fine. It's got three starters on side. Oh wait, we have three starters on side. Ha <laughs> ha! Never mind. Now Mega Charizard Y has Drought, which really assists me taking down his squad. It's a little stally though as he keeps sleeping my Pokemon, but thankfully Charizard wakes up first turn as we keep bursting down his grass starters. We eventually take down Venusaur while dodging his sleep powder cringe. I rotate God of War around to the primary slot before it's taken down by Torterra. This lets me send in my fire chicken, I will keep calling him that, I do not care, who blaze kicks the Torterra and Superior before Shaman in its sky form appears. This obviously has the capability to take down Blaziken, so I rotate back to Charizard to take it out. This doesn't work though, and actually Charizard gets taken out. Luckily our Haunter can finish the job before confusing the Ludicolo so much that it takes itself out as well. From here to Gym 5, we of course have to save the people in the power plant and restore power to the city before we can challenge the gym. This means a couple of easy flare battles and HOLY SHIT THIS RANDOM ADMIN HAS A Raikou AND A Rotom WHAT THE FUCK Okay, let's turn speed up off because he has a freaking Raikou Holy shit balls Okay, let me sub Let me subby Anticipating some type of electric attack And that at least takes us to a normal type Volt switch, there it is, okay what? He was a freaking Raikou! That's so cool! That's so cool. Okay, that was just the admin. I wonder what the Gogo Girl has. Oh! A full team of six which features Volcanion and Mega Heracross! Okay. Thankfully, we do manage to take both of them out though, and we can make it over to Gym 5. This act of bravery by me must have impressed both Eevee and Horn to evolve out of pure love and admiration for what I had to go through. Oh, look at that beautiful blue neon Umbreon. That is such an amazing shiny. And wait, what? what is this? Is this thing even still a shiny? Oh, well, maybe it's Mega Evolution will be cooler. Now, what is really cool is that along the way, I was able to pick up the other Mega Stone for Charizard. This means in this electric gym, I'd be able to use Charizard still as a Mega Charizard X who loses its flying type and gains the dragon typing, which is resistant to electric. Awesome! It was a triple battle and he had a pretty scuffed setup, which relied on his discharge, hitting his own team, either raising their special attack or speed. But thanks to God of War and Charizard, we take it down without much of an issue. 
So we claim badge number five. Finding Callum now for the quadrillionth time goes the same as always. His team hasn't really changed much. We did pick up Gardevoirite on the way from the shop, so I whip out the demon wedding gown just to flex on him. She do be getting thicker though. I like that. All right, Callum down. Now let's head up to uh, what's it called? The next gym is Fairy Gym. So I wonder what legendary she'll have in Fairy Gym or Diancy. Oh, I guarantee she has Diancy. I'm predicting right now. I'm predicting right now. Future RJ editing RJ. If I predict it correct, flash back to this moment and 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 and, and prove that I'm. An uh, intellectual thinker who can think ahead and actually use the power of deduction in the mind to come to that conclusion. And if I'm wrong, well, I guess you can still play this and we can call ourselves an idiot. Well, let's see if I was right. So, leading with Klefki, I lead with Gengar. Not a great matchup, so I swap to Charizard. He ends up getting confused and lowered to half straight away, so I swap to Blaziken instead. Of course, it sets up a spikes and all the other good stuff before Blaziken is red carded out. And in second is Diancy! I called it! I called it! I called it! Ascending Greninja first, who substituted and took a Moonblast, and we managed to lower it just below quarter with a Surf before Diamond Storm knocks me out. Blaziken almost knocks out the Diancy, leaving it on a red before Blaziken is knocked out. But it actually manages to take out Diancy because it got it low enough where its own Life Orb would kill it. From here, I can swap to Gengar and Mega Evolve him. Why can't normal shiny Gengar look like this? It's so dope! Gengar then takes out Granbull, Sylveon, and Azumarill with a Toxic and Venoshock before Mega Mawile appears. Gengar does go down here, but Charizard comes back in and finishes the job. Now, it's time to fight the two Goggle Girls in here. I don't know what their actual title is, but anyway, they actually do give me and Callum a run for our money. Since one of them has a Darkrai and one of them has a Mega Manetrike. But ultimately it means nothing as we take them both down, grab our big nug and the Master Ball I guess, before stopping another Goggle Girl who absolutely stomps me the first time battling her. But we do take her out on the next run very easily. I just needed to know what I was up against. Yeah, Alright, nice. Sweet. Alright, oh, Gym 7. Key. This is yet another rotation battle. Olympia. Oh! It's a triple battle, and she has the Oxus. And Jirachi. Oh my god. The Oxus and Jirachi. What the fuck have I got myself into? Although this looks very scary, the plan was simple. Hit Jirachi with a Blaze Kick, and never mind. It rotated. We do ban the Seager Lift, though, but its ability makes it so it doesn't take any damage from it. Ah. We are a little bit under level here, so we're going to be taking a little bit more damage than we should, but it should be okay. Now Deoxys rotates in before we almost one-shot it with a Blaze Kick. It would have gone down if it didn't have a Focus Sash, which really surprised me. It's healed back up, but without the Sash, we can say goodbye to Deoxys that easily. It didn't even have a chance to do anything. I, I'm not going to complain. Metagross comes in next before it rotates around to Jirachi. Hitting Jirachi, it has a red card, so Blaziken is thrown out and Charizard is pulled in. This lets us take down the Jirachi, and with the legendaries all out of the way, Wait a minute! What?! There's a third legendary! Why does she have three legendaries?! What the heck, bro? I was gonna go for a flamethrower to hit the other Pokemon, but we end up hitting Latios, which does no damage. But it does burn it, which is good. Charizard takes out the Metagross before Mega Medichem is brought in. Our Mega Gengar does take it out, though, and we finish off the Latios and that damn Sigilyph who survived in the background that whole time. Now let's go down to Lysander's little dungeon and see what squad he's rocking. Actually, I don't want to spoil it. Let's see what he has at his best. All you need to know is that this fight wasn't that bad and we made it past it. Now to make it through the rest of this, we have to beat all of the Goggle Girls again, and I guess this Goggle Guy, who all kept their legendaries. And man oh man, there is these two Goggle Girls who you have to fight back to back this is bad for two reasons. First off, we're versing a full team of six with legendaries, and secondly, we have no option to heal in between it. Even if we beat the first battle, but lose the next one, we then have to fight the first battle again, and that's just what happened. After barely scraping through the first fight against a rain-boosted thundering Raikou, that's right, how annoying, we are thrown into the next one with just Gardevoir and Greninja both in red. Yeah, so that didn't go well. 
So after yet again beating that dumb Raikou for the fifth time this run, I've learned your strategies now, I come back to the second Gogo Girl and crush her quite easily. All we needed was a healthy squad. This then takes us to the second team flare base where yes, we have to battle our way through countless annoying fights. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, they do suck because they do have competitive teams, whether they're leaders or not. Random teams down here can have rain teams or heal stalling teams. There's a plethora of cringe. And of course, you know those last four admin battles you have to do right before you catch the legendary? Yeah, all of those admins at least have one or two legendaries on their team. So, uh, that's always fun. Now, in this game, the shiny lock has been lifted, so we could shiny hunt for a Veltal, but it ain't one of the most popular Pokemon. So, we just catch it and move on to the big man himself. Oh, look at that big, burly, lion-looking motherfucker. With his full team of six mega Pokemon in hand, let's see how we go. Alright, I see, I see. He's got the opposite legendary, Xerneas. That's pretty dope. What's even doper though is Gengar's ability to destroy it with Toxic and Venoshock. Garchomp is next, which is quite strong, but I did have to face it before. So, I knew I had to bring the... Yeah, this is the Black Death. Yeah, God of War's coming to suck your soul out, Garchomp. Let's go. And with some Fairy Magic, we take it out. Manshao is next, and that goes down to an Air Slash from Charizard. And oh, he has another Legendary, Heatran. Okay, hopefully Blaziken should be able to finish the job. Oh, it doesn't one shot. That's unfortunate. That's probably dead. Nah. -uh. Nah. Nah. Really, bro? Damn, Blaziken, you're kind of slacking today. Now Greninja has to come in and finish what you started. Finally, he keeps his Mega Gyarados, but a Toxic and a little stall is all it takes to secure the Fat W. Alright, let's steal his pride and save the world. <laughs> Big mad because you're bad. Get sad. <laughs> So with all of that plus stuff out of the way, we head to the next town where Sicker Daddy comes at me with six fully evolved starter Pokemon in a triple battle. Informs me that I've been slacking on my gym grind, so I put him in his place and give him a fat L to hold. I push over this bridge to catch up with the other neighborinos. I'm not scared of you anymore, Tierno. L, take it. I be handing out these to anyone who wants to get in my way. But when I arrive at the gym, uh, the gym leader is nowhere to be found. So we go to the forest to find the final gym leader has actually been training in this forest with all these legendaries. Holy shit. That's kind of cool. Suicune! Oh man, I love Suicune. Oh my god, this is so cool. That's so crazy. They're all just living in this legendary forest. Hello, my children. What are you guys all doing hanging out in this forest? And why are you guys so high level? So we do the same and raise our team up a few levels for Big Papa over here. His ice team is a bit of a pushover though, thanks to our typing being so effective against everything he has. So since this fight was so easy, I'm not going to really focus on it. He did have a white Kurin, but we took that down without a problem, so I think we can just move on. Now with Gym Badge 8 in hand, it's time for Victory Road. Oh my god, this was hell. This was hell. Every single trainer in this place has a full team of 6 with good teams and cracked items and stats. I'm not going to spend time explaining every single atrocity that was committed against me in these caves, but I was also way under level, which did not help at all. But after many trips back to the Pokemon Center, beating Callum again, and grinding my team up to the level, we are here. At the league, ready for what I can only assume to be absolute torture and misery, but in actuality was the most fun Pokemon League experience I've had in a very long time. I honestly can't recommend these types of ROM hacks enough, as it's like playing through a brand new experience. I loved this run so much. Anyway, let's head in and face off against Mummy Malva. I will forever call her that. So these fights are insane. Malva is a double battle and the first time I ran through the fight did not go well. But attempt 2 went a little like this. She leads with Reshiram and Ninetales as I send out Gardevoir and Umbreon. My plan this time was to set up Calm Minds while Umbreon hopefully walls. Ninetales does set up a drought though with his ability and a lot of her Pokemon have Solar Beam which isn't good for Greninja. First turn I Mega Evolve Gardevoir as we Calm Mind and Saint takes the hit. 
We heal it back up and Calm Mind again. Unfortunately, we do get burned, but I will restore that back to full health as well. We try to Moonblast Meshing Ram, but it survives on just a slither of health before she does heal it back up. I take this opportunity to Calm Mind one more time, and the next time we hit the Fire Dragon, it goes down. With our Umbra and Walling so well, and now our God of War becoming a wall of her own, we hit Psychic after Psychic, taking down Ninetales and Chandelure. Sadly, Umbreon goes down before not just one, but two more legendaries are sent out against us. Both Ho-Oh and Heatran. Heatran? Oh, Lysander had a Heatran. I smell something fishy going in the background. Maybe Malvo was a mistress of Team Flare. Hmm. I don't know though. Let me know in the comments if you know. I send in Blaziken to take out the Heatran, and unfortunately that doesn't happen, as it goes down before it even gets a chance. God of War did get Ho-Oh low enough though before it brave birded, so it actually ended up taking itself out as well. Alright, with that we just have to get rid of her Mega Charizard, who isn't shiny by the way, how lame, which we do with the help of Greninja and our own Black Charizard, and the sweeping God of War, who takes out the final two mods. If only that was X, then we'd be doing extra damage. Alright, well that worked out. Alright, next up is the Seal Specialist, which is what I'm currently nuzlocking live every Friday, so come watch the live stream. This is a very easy fight, no thanks to him being weak, but thanks to me being completely prepared. This is another rotation battle, and basically I destroy everything he has with Mega Charizard Y. Empoleon, dead. A freaking Dialga, dead. Ferrothorn, dead. Couldn't even lay traps. Klefki, dead. And Aegis Slash stalled me and took out Charizard. But after a little bit of time, you guessed it, it was dead as well. Leaving just Mega Agron, which stood no chance to revive Charizard. <laughs> Charizard was OP, let's go. Drowsy Drasner is next, and her battle is a normal one-on-one. -on -one. Shame for her though, is my Gardevoir is the hottest motherfucker in all the land. And once she's set up, she gets freaking dirty. Now, her dragon affords me the chance to set up six, that's right, six Calm Minds as I healed up every time I got low. Then with my stats gone all the way to the moon, we begin the sweep. Down goes the three-headed beast, and out comes Giratina. Uh, take this moon, man. <laughs> Rayquaza, my personal favorite Pokemon? Sorry, you must be executed. Noivern, bye. Latios, bye. Until she mega evolves her own Charizard into Charizard X. And that actually takes me down in one shot. Damn. Now this thing almost reverse sweeps me by knocking out Gengar and Greninja, but we managed to survive long enough with Umbreon where Charizard took itself out with its own Flare Blitz. What a fool! Now for Cybold, the one you always have to fear. Cybold! Aka Jorno. Is it, there was even like the love heart things there. Oh my god. He has a plethora of great Pokemon in his team, and his rain team is kind of brutal. We have a lot of Pokemon which are weak to water, so we just have to do our best. This is a triple battle, and the last of its kind. He sends out Kyogre, Ludicolo, and Kingdra, while I send out Greninja, Umbreon, and Gardevoir. Now to, I'm sure nobody's surprised, I Mega Evolve the Gardevoir and begin stacking it up. At this point, it's the only way I'm going to secure a win. Annoyingly, the enemy has Thunder, which is a guaranteed hit in the rain, which of course one-shots Greninja. He subs Kyogre out before I can finish it off, but the rain dropping around Gardevoir gets it all feeling kind of funky, raising its damage and defense. We do take out the Ludicolo with a Brave Bird from the Fire Chicken, and in comes Palkia. Unfortunately, it's on the wrong side, and Gardevoir can't reach it from that side. Unfortunate, but will work around it. I sent both Gardevoir and Umbreon after the Gastrodon who has been gaining stacks of special attacks from its Storm Drain ability and the two of them managed to take out that monster before it can deal any real damage. But Blaziken does go down here. Kingdra's next on the chopping block who goes down to a Moonblast next as he's left with just Kyogre, Palkia and his Mega Blastoise. But it's taken out by Gardevoir straight away. Now we send out Gengar to poison Palkia as Gardevoir takes out the Kyogre, and finally we shift Gardevoir to the middle and finish off Palkia. And here we are, the champion fight against Diantha. I wonder what crazy team she's going to have stored in those balls of hers. We've come so far, defeated so many legendary Pokemon, conquered all 8 gyms, stopped the evil team from doing their villainous thing, claimed 6 amazing shiny Pokemon, made it all the way through the hellish victory road, beat all the Elite Four members, and now, here we are, at the gates of glory. But, can we do it? 
Let's find out. I literally just got goosebumps. Down a sec first? Okay. Oh, let's go! This is dope. Okay. Alright. We should have uh, done PP restoration, but I forgot. Is that an electric drive? I think it is. We need to be mindful of that. Mega Charizard! Let's go! Come on, man. Get that drought going. Iron Head? Go for it. Go for it, bro. Get the Heat Wave off. We're good. Genesect down. Interesting choice. Interesting first Pokemon. Okay. Zygarde. Now, the thing is, can we take... Should we set up a Calm Mind? I'll, I'll, I'll go for one Calm Mind. It's Dragon Dancing, so... And it already outspeeds me, so... Knock this before it even gets to do anything. Let's go! Okay! Stupid Zygarde! Fool! Damn! She has a freaking Arceus, bro! Okay! Okay, that's good. That's solid. That's solid. That's solid. We got the speed boost. We should outspeed Arceus and just should be able to... Scar of a God! Let's go! Okay, Arceus down. It shows you legendaries don't mean shit. Lugia. Oh, we do outspeed it. Whirlwind, okay. Interesting choice. Who are you bringing out? Marisol, okay. That's not the end of the world. Look at Moonblast. See what that does. Fucking toxic, alright. Dude, just toxicing my whole screen, like, whole team. But. <laughs> you fool! We have freaking synchronized! Now Lugia's guaranteed done. Oh, we crit? Nice, drop in special attack. Lugia just can't do anything except poison my team. Roost, okay, I see, I see what's happening. Just literally stalling. Now Lugia here literally stalls for probably upwards of 20 turns. Not only does he whirlwind my whole team in and out, he also poisons everything as he pulls everything in and out. And whenever he gets low, he just roosts back up to full health. This was probably the most obnoxious fight in the whole run, but eventually he whirlwinds Gengar back in after we got him poisoned, and we're able to finish him off with a hex. Done. Alright. Done! Air Slash. One shot? Ooh, was that focus? Yeah, it does. Damn, that hit. Bugger. Oh, you know what? Let's go. It goes for it again. It can't hit Aldrin. Oh. Fuck. I think we toxic it. Fuck it. That was a bad play. Now its speed is just going through the fucking roof. Miss. Ah. Oh, we one shot that time. No focus band to save ya, little fuck. I might swap Charizard. Mewtwo! Of course. Of course, Mewtwo. Oh! Mega Evolving! A Mewtwo X! Okay! Is that physically bulky or specially bulky? I don't even know. Drain Punch? Okay, that's death. Zerla, set up the Drought, and then you're gonna do your best. Alright, now Drought set up. We're just gonna go for the Heat Wave. Good shit, Charizard. Okay. That's close. Um, honestly, that's like enough to work with, bro. Oh, the Forest Store. Right, 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 right. Get it back. Oh, big burn! Let's go! Let's go, Charizard! Fire Blast? Go for it, bud. Take me out. It's fine. Blaziken. My man! Let's end this with a final blaze kick. Big dodge. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do
Oh no! Damn! What a fight! Wow, that was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. We got to do so much. We got to see so many legendaries. Like, oh my god, it was so good. If you guys enjoyed this, let me know in the comments. And if you want to see me do something similar in another game, like maybe we can go hit up a Mega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire or something like that. And so if you guys want to see that, let me know. The Pokemon Wilting Y Insanity Mode has been completed. Um, what if I did this as a Nuzlocke? 